Um, just wanted to thank you for the opportunity here to you know, work with the board to um, you know, give you training on the superintendent's evaluation process, recognizing that you will be starting it soon. So it is always helpful to have that training. And especially for new board members, um, it is a requirement that by the state that new board members get trained on the evaluation process within your first six months of office. So this is a good opportunity to do that. Um, so having said that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And for the board members, please feel free to stop at any time or ask any questions at any time. And I can see that you all have copies of the presentation, so that's great. I'm go ahead and get started. Um, so this is just you know, the agenda, the things we're going to talk about, the legal guidelines, the process itself, and the tool, um, and an ethics reminder that we know that if there is a board member who has a relative that works in the district, that the board member cannot take part in the evaluation process at all. They are allowed to know the process, um, but not be part of it. So just, you know, as we talk about the superintendent's evaluation, as we talk about the board's role, you know that we always tell the board that it's, you know, not our job to run the schools, but to make sure that they're well run. And the way that we do that is through the evaluation process, that, that from a board's perspective, that is how we exercise our oversight role. You know, we always tell board members that the most important thing you do is to hire a superintendent, and then the second most important thing after that is to evaluate the superintendent because again, that is how we make sure um, that the, the district is being well run through that process. So the superintendent's evaluation is in statute and in code, some of the components that are required. Um, so it's required that the board has to evaluate the superintendent at least once a year. It has to be in writing, that the board and the superintendent have to meet to discuss it. Um, it has to be based on um, district goals. Um, the responsibilities of the superintendent, what's in the job description, and then any criteria that the State Board of Ed has approved, and we'll look at that in just a minute. Um, the legal deadline to complete the evaluation is July 1st, and then it's also required that the evaluation provide areas of strength, areas needing improvement, any recommendations for growth, and then there also has to be some tie to the students of how our students um, are, are growing and progressing. And then also importantly, the board has to have that final sit down conference with the superintendent. And again, it says that it needs to include at least a majority of the board <coughs> members and that the evaluation has to be prepared by at least a majority of the board members. Um, you know, sometimes get asked, you know, most boards do use New Jersey School Board's evaluation tool. Um, but it's not required. What is required is that every board follow these legal guidelines um, and our tool is just the way to help you do that. So in addition to you know, recognizing that it's in statute, that it's our requirement, um, a lot of times we would get asked, well, what happens if we don't do it? What happens if we don't get it done by July 1? So just wanted to indicate a few years ago that when the state change some of the requirements from CUSAC, that this then got added as one of the requirements. Um, so there are points now for the board finishing by July 1st, um, six points for that, and seven points for making sure that the board has a policy and that the, you know, that the training does take place. So I mean, those, are, your administrators can tell you that's a lot of points to give up, um, you know, that you wouldn't want to do, recognizing that you have some control over that. So we want to make sure that we do have a process. Um, so I kind of talked about this little bit of making sure, you know, that um, New Jersey School Board's tool is an option for you. And just kind of wanted to, you know, let you know the genesis of that, that probably it's been about three years ago now that um, representatives from New Jersey School Boards met with representatives from NJASA, the Superintendents Association, um, and then together we worked on this tool. I was one of the people that um, participated in that process, so came up with a tool that we felt, you know, best um, was able to um, allow the boards to evaluate the superintendent's performance. So we have been, you know, kind of collaborating on it um, the past few years here to help roll it out and make sure that everyone's comfortable with the tool. 
So it's you know said that it's important you know before we even get started, um, you know in New Jersey school boards we have a, a census that's kind of a roster of your board and making sure that that census is up to date, all your new board members are on there, um, and also the compiled document once the board is done is tied to who is listed in the census as the board president, so then that person has access um, to the document. So we just need to make sure then that you know that those things are up to date. So just wanted to show a sample evaluation calendar, and that's one of the things that as a board that you should be doing is calendaring your work in this process so that it, we are making sure that we're giving it the time it needs. So the suggestion that I typically give to boards is to take that July 1st date and work backwards. Um, so that ideally you don't need to add any additional meetings, usually we have had enough of those, right, um, into the process to make sure that we get these steps done. So if we know we have to be done by July 1st, then we would take your last June meeting and consider that to be then the meeting that you would have the sit down meeting with the superintendent and then work backwards from there and say, okay, what step do we need to get done before then? Then let's make sure we get that done at the previous meeting. And then just kind of look at the steps um, to determine then when you need to start so that you are done by that by July 1st and then try to minimize the addition of any you know extra meetings into the process. So I talk about this being a process and so just wanted to kind of reiterate that that is the intent of this flowchart is to show that it is a process that we're not just doing the superintendent's evaluation once a year. It's something that actually you know, goes on all year long, that in the summers, typically when the board and the superintendent will you know, get together to set those district goals. So we are then having you know, some part in the what of determining what is the direction of the district going to be for the year and what is it that we are going to hold the superintendent accountable for accomplishing. Um, then we should be getting updates, to, you know, then throughout the year from the superintendent, allowing us to, you know, kind of know where we're at so that when it's time to do the evaluation, you know, there's no surprises that the board is aware of where things are at, the superintendent knows what the board thinks, um, and then we're able to, you know, have an informed process. So I'm going to take you through the, the steps of the process that we show here. Like I said, it starts out with with those with the district goals. So, and again, you know, we saw in statute that that is part of the requirements. And um, we typically say that when a board sits down with the superintendent to set those goals, that about three to five goals is ideal. You know, that much more than that. You know, we don't want to be sending the district in too many different directions. We want to focus on those three or four things that we think are so important to move the district forward that we're going to hold the superintendent accountable by putting them in her evaluation. So here then is how the process starts then. Um, in, in New Jersey School Board's tool that we just recently sent an email out to all the superintendents in the state, letting them know that the tool was open, that the tool is available. Um, so the, the, the superintendent is the one that starts the process by logging in, inputting the district goals, and then providing a self-assessment about the goals, whether they think it was achieved, satisfactory progress was made, or little or no progress was made. Um, you know, and the other, one of the things we're seeing is the more and more multi-year goals. So sometimes, even if we see satisfactory progress made, you know, recognizing that that is, you know, not a negative, that perhaps because it's a multi-year goal, that would be as much as we could expect for this year. And then recognize that the action plans to accomplish that goal then for the next year would be different than the plans, you know, that were provided for the current year. Um, and then the superintendent is able to provide evidence to the board right in the tool here so that as you are you know, in the evaluation, you'll be able to see the evidence that the superintendent has provided for you. Um, then once the superintendent is done and submits um, you know, her part of the evaluation, um, New Jersey School Boards has a 48 hour window built in so that she, in, you know, in case she has those last minute thoughts of like, I wish I would have put this in it or you know, it goes back to think about it, um, that there's 48 hours for her to do that. And then our system automatically sends an email out to all of the board members and says, okay, board members, your superintendent has finished her part of it. It's now time for you to log in and complete your part of it. 
So um, let me just go back to it. So I just wanted to emphasize then when it comes to the goals piece then, so then you'll log in, you'll see the information that the superintendent put in about the goal and her assessment, and then you'll be able to add your assessment about the goal, and then you are able to add comments as well. But just wanted to emphasize, you know, a lot of times I see board members in this comment section writing comments to the superintendent this is actually a board's, the board's working document. So as, if you are writing comments, it should be to your fellow board members for them to understand why you provided the, or the rating that you did. So this is your opportunity to, um, you know, to add some clarity to your rating. So here then it's, you know, so like I said, then once all of the, you are done as individual board members, and so I will be working back and forth with the board president, you know, typically we, um, you know, and all of you will be able to see as well who's completed it and who hasn't. And so once it's determined then that all of the board members have completed it, then New Jersey School Boards has a, a, a system that um, compiles all your individual responses into one anonymous document. So this is kind of a sample of what that document might look like for the goals part of it, that it would show you kind of what the goal was, what the superintendent's comments were, um, what the superintendent's rating was, and then you would be able to see what the, the board's ratings were. And then where you see the asterisk down below under members' comments, that's how you will know then when a different board member is speaking in terms of the comments. So, um, so this then is that document that is um, electronically available then to the board president through our system. So I said, you know, that there were two parts to the evaluation. So the first part is the analysis of the goals. But then, you know, if we think about the fact that we're held accountable to identifying areas of strength, identifying areas where more growth is needed, um, and talked about that criteria as prescribed by the State Board of Ed, um, some of that, that criteria are the national leadership standards. Um, so we use that as the basis for the, the standards in this evaluation tool, um, but recognize that these leadership standards extend to more than just the superintendent, it was other positions as well. So we had to extract out of there what standards were relevant you know, for a board evaluating the superintendent versus other positions. So, um, and then also there wasn't any governance in there, so we added that in there as well, you know, since that is an important part of the board superintendent relationship. So these are then the, the standards that the superintendent is evaluated against. And, you know, before we updated this tool, the standards were kind of more functional, like personnel, finance, um, and then recognize that the, the, the job of the superintendent really encompasses so much more than that. So that the standards then were updated to look at things like, you know, the mission, vision, your core values, community of care, equity, you know, professional capacity. So, you know, a much more encompassing of the work that the superintendent does. So similar then to the way then that each board member would evaluate the superintendent on the district goals, the board members will also evaluate the superintendent on each one of those six standards. Um, so one of the things that we, you know, found in the past is that sometimes board members would have different kind of interpretations of what the ratings meant, where, say, if two board members both thought the superintendent was doing the same kind of job, but to me that meant, say, exemplary, and to someone else that meant proficient, um, we kind of try to help it be a little more informed so that for each one of the standards, there is a definition of what that, the rating means for that standard. Um, there is the opportunity here as well for the superintendent to provide links, like live links to documents. So you can set up a Google Doc or some other you know, way to link some folders and link some information, perhaps links to the, um, the, the district website, ways to provide you as the board members information that you would need um, in order for you to, you know, be able to complete this in an informed way. Um, so there is an overall standard statement, and if you'll see down on the bottom, you know, that you're asked to give an overall rating in, on the standard, um, but 
we thought that it would be helpful rather than just kind of looking at the standard um, and then to, to make a rating to have some indicators in there that would help break that standard down into some more meaningful parts and wanted to make sure that board members were thoughtful about it. So ask, you know, that you kind of put the X's or, you know, put ratings in the stand in the indicators, um, but that's not going to automatically fill in the standard because um, these indicators may be weighted differently. So wanted you to just, again, you know, make sure that, that you're looking at it, thinking about it, and then you'll be asked to give an overall rating. Um, and then you will then also be asked for comments as well. So again, individually, you're you know, filling this out. And then again, it's getting compiled into that one document. So this then is what that um, comp compilation would look like. So you would again see the standard kind of for each one of the indicators, what the board members rated, what the overall ratings were for each standard, and then we would also see that compilation of all of the comments as well that each board member would have made for this standard. So one of the things that, you know, in the work that we do as board members, you know, this compiled document, like I said, it's a working document for the board because it contains everyone's opinions. Um, and that's important that we hear from everyone, but similar to decisions that the board makes, the decisions are based on the majority opinion. So that's why this compiled document is not the superintendent's evaluation. This compiled document is a worksheet for the board. So the board then would need to meet again, you know, meet in executive session. You would always have to write to the superintendent when you were doing that to look at this compiled document and extract from that and decide from that then, based on this document, what is the majority opinion? And then the state calls it an annual performance report then is what is the superintendent's actual evaluation. Um, and New Jersey School Boards does have a template for that as well. Um, and the template helps kind of you to make sure that we stay focused on the goals, stay focused on the standards. Um, and then, like I said, then that is what is considered the superintendent's um, actual evaluation. So in looking at the process, you know, I can say that sometimes there's a couple different ways to do that. You can either, you know, all sit down together um, with, you know, copies of that compilation that came from New Jersey School Boards and kind of have a blank slate and kind of, you know, say, it is either sometimes the board president that is the author then of the, per the annual performance report, or it can be, you know, the vice president, it can be someone on the personnel committee, whoever the board decides um, is going to um, perform that role. Um, so everyone would just be kind of providing, you know, as a group deciding then what that majority opinion will, will be. Um, and then other, in other cases, sometimes a board will start with someone writing a draft, whoever the person is that is charged with doing this, to take the compilation, take the draft, you know, write a draft, and then everybody sits together and tweaks the draft to saying, you know, I think that this would be better, and you left this out. And so that, you know, what's important is that at the end of the, the, the day, the full board has had the opportunity to, to look at the compiled document, to provide their input, and to leave comfortable with the fact that the document that's going to be given to the superintendent is a document that reflects the majority opinion. So this is a copy then of what that template looks like that New Jersey School Boards um, does make available to boards to help you, um, you know, complete that annual performance report. So it's similar to, you know, like I said, it kind of um, puts together all the information that we saw before. So for each one of the goals, it would ask you to, you know, give an overall um, rating on the goal, provide a comments for, you know, that, that reflects the majority opinion for each goal. The same would be true then for each standard, to give an overall rating for each standard with supporting comments. Um, and then to you know, help fulfill that requirement of areas of strength, areas where more growth is needed. Again, you can identify standards that, you know, that apply here. And then also um, supporting remarks. Um, with also then the opportunity, there are some open-ended boxes as well for any, you know, feedback and additional information that the board would like to give to the superintendent. And then that's, that's 
you know, summation part of it then is the board and the superintendent sitting down together then to have that summary conference. Again, the board would have to um, provide the superintendent with the rice notification. And we say that's important to give the superintendent the evaluation, ideally at least 48 hours ahead of time so that she can come to the meeting prepared to have a meaningful discussion with the board. Um, and we you know, would like to emphasize that it really is important for all of the board members who are not conflicted to be there. I know I have seen in some boards their practices sometimes like just the president and the vice president might sit down or the personnel committee, but this is really your opportunity to have a conversation with the superintendent. And you know, we had said that the, I had said the annual performance report reflects the majority opinion. If I am the mon a holder of the minority opinion about something, then one of the rights I have is that I have the right to be heard. So if my opinion is not contained in the evaluation, you know, so let's say for a particular goal, the board, the majority opinion was that that goal was accomplished, but let's say I don't think it was, that I was expecting to see something else, this would be my opportunity then to voice that. Um, and that conference you know, does have to be done by July 1st. So that is the last piece. You know, a lot of times people think they just need to have the written part done by July 1st, but actually the entire process needs to be done by July 1st. So in terms of considerations, you know, just wanted to you know, again emphasize the fact that it's just not a once a year thing, <laughs> that the year starts from July 1st to June 30th. You know, so we need to make sure that we are considering everything. And for new board members, you know, that can be a challenge because you don't come sit in your seat until January 1. You know, six months out of the year is over already. You didn't have a say-so in the goals. Um, so you are just kind of coming into the middle of the process. So that's why that evidence that the superintendent provides is important to allow you to be able to determine, you know, what things have taken place. And one of the things I should have emphasized in the evaluation that I didn't um, was that there is a category that that says not observed. So if you, you know, truly feel that you do not have the information you need to, um, to fill something out on the evaluation, that, that that is an option available to you. We want to make sure that you can participate as much as you feel comfortable in doing and not be asked to evaluate something that you do not feel comfortable doing. And it's not a negative, it's not a positive, it's just strictly that, I didn't see it. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it's important if somebody, a new, person says not observed, I think in the comment section, they should state as a new board member because not observed can be taken as they didn't do it. But if they haven't seen it, I think it's fair to put in the comment section, being a new board member, I did not observe this. I think that is clarification that should be noted. Great, thank you, that's a good point. And you know, and sometimes it's helpful too, like I said, because you're going to be looking at this compiled document and it's a working document for the board, you need to think about it, like you say, from that perspective of how can I ha help my fellow board members understand why I gave this rating that I gave. So, um, you know, as much as we said it's important for the superintendent to provide evidence, it's also important for you as a board member to come up with some kind of a system to, to keep evidence and things you think would be important to note in the evaluation, um, the importance of communication. And then I can't stress enough, you know, having every board member who's eligible to complete the evaluation um, to do so, that it really is, you know, an important part of your governance work. It really is how you as a board are making sure that the district is well run. Um, you know, New Jersey School Boards on our website has some online resources for you. We have um, a guidebook. We have uh, a webinar that is goes through the same presentation that I just did. So if you wanted to log on and look at it, you, you just didn't get enough of it this time, right? I wanted to log on and then look at it again, put you to sleep maybe at night or something. You're welcome to do that. Um, and that was all that I had, unless anyone had any questions for me.